Kung Fu Panda is a remarkable film. We're seeing things come to life on screen that, uh, frankly, we've not been able to do before. It really is the combination of uh, great action with uh, the mystery of China, with uh, fighting, kung fu, fur, and, and of course, a great story. We wanted it to be a real big action movie as much as it was an intimate character story. Plus we have uh, characters with fur and they wear clothing and those are both very complicated in most movies you get to choose one uh, of those two things. Then when you ask somebody to jump 20 feet in the air and do a ramp house kick, you know, wearing cloth and you know, the things get tricky. So we were very ambitious and everyone else who worked on the film was just as ambitious and worked really hard to figure out how they could contribute some, uh, you know, creative solutions to, to some of these very complicated, complex um, artistic problems that we kept presenting them with every single day. But all the departments came together to, to really, um, you know, put their best work in, you know, from animation to effects to rigging to character effects. We found very early on that the rigs, which sort of is the internal skeleton of the character, they wouldn't hold up. The physicality of Kung Fu, it, uh, it was just too much strain and burden on the, on the rigs, so we had to go back and totally re-engineer and redesign all the rigs for all the characters so they would actually be able to do martial arts. This shot was one that really showed off what you guys were doing with the rig for uh, Viper. It was very important for uh, Viper to be able to twist in ways that should be uh, impossible and also to have all the uh, breaking points in their shape. It was important for the old Kung Fu to be visible and recognizable. Like here when she stretches to the left side, you know, it was important for us to actually be the hint of the kick. And this was a great test for the technology, for yeah. the character design, for the, for the rig that we put in there. And, you know, once we saw this, we kind of felt like we had a character yeah, that was going to yeah. fly. Overall, I think the coolest thing that you achieved with the surf sing was you maintained the intent of the design. The idea to keep it believable was to actually make them almost more like plush toys. Teddy bears getting in kung fu fights, which I, I think is the great contrast in the film, that you've got this soft feel and then you've got the hard impact of kung fu. <laughs> We did short fur that wasn't dynamic. We didn't want all the fur to be bouncing every time the character bounced. So because of that, we also had to spend a lot of time grooming. We went messy, we went clean, and we ended up having to just put a lot of dense fur on there because it was so short and we needed it to be structured. The other advantage of the short fur was we had to deal with clothing on a lot of our characters. Yeah! <laughs> Excellent. We knew we had furry characters with clothing we had to figure out a way to use computing power to solve that, to make this movie possible. It smooshes out technology for fur to clothing contact. Smoosh allows us to slide the clothing over the surface and for the fur to actually move and be pushed down in the areas where it is, and then it actually, it springs up um, as, the, as the clothing releases it. Once we had that kind of look, we can then customize it in terms of how much fur lays down, how fast it, it, it springs back to really get that kind of naturalistic look. An important part of this was automating it, because when you have 1,500 shots, several characters, maybe even crowds, that all used this technology, it needed to be something that we could use as an artistic tool, but also used it as a computing tool. We wanted a system whereby a lot of the stuff would go through automatically, so that we could really concentrate on the action moments. Because we're a, we're a kung fu movie, we have also had to push uh, the effects in our film further than any movie the studio's ever done before. One of the key examples was Thailand's Escape, and we wanted to break the last big obstacle, kind of, which is the, the break, breaking of the bridge. The first thing we're given is basically an artwork. From rough layout, we have a kind of a choreography of, in general, how things should work. So this is kind of a the input that we, we, we give to the system, where we paint the different colors on the outside of the geometry and uh, 
the system takes that as input and spills out basically the final pieces of your broken bridge. At the same time, we start adding the, the detail to add scale to the, to the shots. The rocks that emit from the cracks as, as the big pieces crack apart, uh, stuff that exploded from the seating as it's falling down. It's important for us to really sell the scale and make it believable. It's a marriage between really art direction and, and, and technology, which I, I think is, exemplifies to some extent how we approach movie making. The ultimate showcase of all the, the technical work all our uh, great you know, departments did, you know, rigging, character effects, special effects, clothing, everything. It was, it was probably the road bridge, probably the single most you know, taxing and demanding, technically complex sequence in the whole film. There wasn't a single department that was confident about, you know, uh, oh yes, I've done that before. We had breakage, we had water, we had sort of kung fu destruction, we had impacts on the characters, we had all sorts of, sort of crazy stuff that, that no other movie that the Dreams has ever done. And it's one of the things we're most proud of in the movie. But all we really want people to do is to be involved in the story of, you know, the Furious Five fighting Tai Lung and get caught up in the fight and hopefully all of that other stuff, even though it required thousands of man hours to get right, hopefully all of that just goes away and just get lost in the story. <laughs> When you're making computer animation, technology is at the essence of what we do. And having the best tool set in the hands of great artists makes great movies. The ability to create richer and more compelling images is something that we look to do literally each and every time with each movie beyond what we've done before. Today's technology are bringing to life films that we couldn't have even imagined a couple years ago. And it's exciting to think about where that's all heading for the future.